It's time now to talk about the return of serve. And of course, one of the best returners in the game is Novak Djokovic. So Matt, just talk us through why is Novak's return so effective? Uh, well, first of all, because he stands pretty close to the baseline uh, and he doesn't change his court positioning that much between the first serve and the second serve return. Uh, obviously, when you have a two-handed backhand, you tend to return a little bit better off of the backhand side than a one-handed backhand. So he has maybe the best two-handed backhand of all time, and especially on the return of serve. And I think the fact that it, it's on grass here at Wimbledon, he's so flexible as well. So he can get to the wide serve much better than other players. He doesn't have to worry about the kick serve that balances high. And I think that therefore his return of serve on grass is way more effective than it is on the other surfaces. Yeah, and would he return differently on a grass court to how he would on a hard court or a clay court? And obviously the positioning that he gets himself into, is that different? I would think that he, uh, he tries to hit a little bit less shorten up your swings a little bit on grass because there is a chance that the ball either skids through the court or sometimes even here at Wimbledon it can take sort of a bad bounce so you need to shorten your swings I think the forehand side of uh, Novak Djokovic is not quite as good as the backhand and that usually has to do with that he has such an extreme grip yeah so what's gri what grip does he actually use for the return because well, obviously you can, you can stand there with forehand or backhand can't yeah you? you can but I think with two hands what I used to do because obviously I had a two-handed backhand too was to to favor the forehand grip just a little bit because you have the other hand and you can help and you can hit one backhand with the wrong grip on the return of serve and then you change your grip to the, to the one you prefer when you hit a two-handed backhand. And I think Djokovic does the same, but he definitely has a weaker forehand return than the backhand return. So does Rafael Nadal and so does Roger Federer in many ways and that has to do with their grips. And he stays very, very low, doesn't he? A very wide stance and very crouched over actually. Yeah, he does and I think the big difference between him and, and other really good returners like let's say Andy Andy Murray, Andy Murray takes this giant split step towards, the, towards the, uh, the serve and especially on the second serve. So I think he's a little more intimidating whereas Djokovic is much more quiet and he literally just has a little split step. But you can see him, his eyes are very important. You see him clear his eyes before he returns and, and sort of does this. And his reaction time is, is incredible. But I think the fact that, that his swings are so short, I think that's what makes him the best returner of all time. When you're returning against a massive server, is it just a case of just picking one way or the other? What is the key? That is a good question. Um, we always heard Roger Federer again say that he always knew where Andy Roddick would serve. And I don't know why he would, he would do that. I think you know where the, your opponent's going to serve sometimes depending on the score. So on grass courts here at Wimbledon, very often the players start off the first point with a slice serve out to the forehand. Yeah. So they can open up the court. Plus it's an easy serve to hit for pros, you know that. Much easier than the flat serve. Um, but I think the, the single most important is to try and figure out where the toss is. Because very often you can see when the player throws the ball a little bit further out here when they're going to hit a slice serve yeah. and they throw it a little bit further behind them when they're going to hit a kick serve. So you're, or try yeah. Yeah, you're trying to read it all. You're trying to read it this way, sideways, but also you're trying to read it a little bit how far in front because if they're going to hit a really hard flat serve, yeah. we tend to throw the ball a little bit further in front yeah. so that you get your whole body. Second serve, obviously, is going to be a little bit more behind you. So I think the combination of knowing what your opponent's favorite serve is, yeah. realizing what surface you're playing on, and also the score. Yeah. Add that together with trying to figure out where the toss is. Yeah, and the other thing to talk about, I guess, is that some players like to chip that return of serve as opposed to hit it. Mm. And also, some players just like to kind of nullify the point to the center of the court others be aggressive like Novak Djokovic and actually go for the lines, don't they? Yeah. Very different mindset in terms of how you're going to return. Very different mindsets. Um, and I think that Djokovic, what he does what he does so well is he's predictable. He hits nearly every return. Very rarely does he take a one-handed backhand and chips it back. Mm -hmm. Whereas you see Roger Federer, of course, chips most of the backhand returns back. Stanislav Wawrinka chips off of both sides. Mm -hmm. So he just tries to get the ball neutral in the middle of the court and then he can start hitting. Whereas Djokovic, it must be very stressful to play against him because he's always on top of your first serve and your second serve. Yeah. And I really don't know if a kick serve or a slice serve is the best serve against Djokovic. I think a body serve sometimes works the best. Great stuff. So there you have it, the return of serve.